Hi everyone! Tonight's video is on glycolysis, and you should have already watched the Introduction to Cellular Respiration video and also the ATP cycle video before watching this video. So the energy in glucose, as we know from our previous video, is in the loosely held electrons in those carbon-hydrogen bonds. We're going to go through how we get those electrons from those carbon-hydrogen bonds and use those to put the P back on the ADP to make more ATP for the cell in this next series of videos. So glucose here is a six carbon compound, and I've got pictured here on the left-hand screen the process of glycolysis in a very abbreviated form. And it starts with the glucose molecule, which is a six carbon compound. In the first few steps of glycolysis, two ATP are actually used. They're spending money to add two phosphates to glucose to make it more unstable. It makes the electrons easier to harvest. And you might wonder, like, why are you going to spend money when the whole point of this process was to make more money, to make more ATP? Well, we call this the energy investment phase, and it goes along with the phrase, you have to spend money to make money. The cell has to actually add some ATP to get the process going, to get glucose into an unstable enough form so that it can roll downhill and use that energy to make more ATP. So at the end of this energy investment phase, glucose gets split into two three carbon compounds. Glucose is a six carbon compound, so we haven't actually lost any carbons. We've just cut it in half. So starting at this point in glycolysis, all of the reactions have a two in front of them because that means for every original glucose, glucose, there are two of each of the molecules after that step. So after a glucose gets, gets split into its two three carbon compounds, the process of plucking those electrons begins. And the electrons are taken from the three carbon compounds and placed on a molecule called NAD+. And that molecule, when it picks up electrons, is called NADH. And that molecule, NADH, is going to bring these electrons to the mitochondria. So I want to stop talking about glycolysis for a minute and go through the process of how does NADH hold electrons and where does it take them. So what is NAD plus or NADH? Well, NAD plus and NADH, it's an electron holder. NAD plus is what it is called when it does not have any extra electrons from glucose, so it has a positive charge. And I like to think of this molecule as something that has two hands that are empty. It doesn't have any extra electrons. NADH, when it has this extra hydrogen molecule here, is what the molecule is called when it has two electrons from glucose. I think of those as full hands as having an electron in each hand. So NAD plus does not have any extra electrons from glucose. NADH has two electrons from glucose. So whenever you see the molecule NADH, you know that it is carrying two electrons from glucose. And the energy in glucose is in those electrons, so effectively it's carrying the energy from um, glucose. So the role of NADH in cellular respiration is to carry the electrons from glucose to the final phase of respiration, the electron transport chain, which is in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So here you can see NADH, which is picking up some electrons from glucose. It's bringing electrons to the final phase, which we will talk about in a future video. So let's go back to our glycolysis pathway, where we had glucose, which was broken down into two three carbon compounds that took two ATPs to get it to this place. And at this next step, we now have a two NAD plus coming along, and each one of those is picking up two electrons. So in this one step here, four of those electrons, which is where the energy is in glucose, have been harvested from the original glucose, and they're going to be used in that final phase of respiration. In the final few steps of glycolysis, we do have ATP being made. So here we have two ADPs being made into two ATPs, two ADPs being made into two ATPs. So at the end of glycolysis, we have a net gain of two ATPs for every glucose. We made four, but we spent two. So the net gain was two ATPs per glucose. The other thing that we have left at the end of glycolysis 
are two pyruvates, those three carbon compounds. So looking at the formula, the balanced reaction for respiration, let's look where we are so far after the process of glycolysis, which happens in the cytoplasm. Did we make any CO2 in this process? We did not. Did we use any oxygen in this process? We did not. Did we produce any H2O, any water? We did produce one molecule, but not the bulk of the water is produced here. Did we make very much ATP? Well, we had a net gain of two, and that's some, but we didn't make a lot. And what we did have at the end is our pyruvate molecules, and there are still a lot of loosely held electrons in that pyruvate. So what should you know from this glycolysis video? You should know where glycolysis occurs in the cell. It's very important. You should know in a general way what goes into glycolysis and what comes out. If you look at the net of what goes in, glucose goes in, ADP goes in, and NAD8 plus goes in. I know that we also put some ATP in, but in a net sense, we only put in ADP because it gets balanced out. What comes out is pyruvate, ATP, and NADH. And this is our compound that is holding on each one of those to two electrons from glucose. You should also know why there's two pyruvates at the end, but only one glucose went in. You should understand what is NAD plus and NADH and what the relationship is of one to the other. Which one is holding electrons? Which one is not? Where does it take those electrons? What is the overall role in cellular respiration? Where does it take those electrons? How many electrons each one can hold? And you should know the relative amounts of ATP and NADH produced. Is it a little or is it a lot? And you should, you, you should understand, is any oxygen used? Have we produced any carbon dioxide? So that's all for tonight.